I'm now delighted to welcome our final speaker of the series, but of course not the least, and that is my friend and the uh, National General Secretary of YMCA East Jerusalem. The East Jerusalem YMCA was founded in 1948 on the site of the Shepherd's Field from the story of Jesus' birth. Peter, can you share with us how you're taking care of your body, mind, and spirit during this crisis? And then you can just take it away. Thank you. Hi, Patricia. Thank you for having me here. Um, so for my spirit, mind, and body, I have been exercising. I've been playing music. I play guitar. And I've been trying to stay healthy. So this is what I've, uh, these are my spirit, mind, and body for the last few days, as well as working for the Y and trying to overcome this emergency. All right. So uh, hello from, I'm actually in Ramallah, but hello from Jerusalem, which is the headquarters of our YMCA. Um, so I'd like to tell you a little bit about the East Jerusalem YMCA and how we've been dealing with this uh, very challenging time. Um, we are comprised of sports centers. We have three community and sports centers in Jerusalem, Sahur, which is in Bethlehem and Ramallah. Uh, we started, as Patricia said, in 1948, but we started in Jericho at first. Uh, we, it's a, YMCA started emergency provisions to refugees of uh, the, the Israeli War of Independence. Uh, we have a, a run a women development program as well since 1992, and its aim is to empower the 51% of our society that we need to utilize. Uh, we have an advocacy program that promotes social justice for Palestine, as well as, uh, and it does, they, we do that through an environmental cause, uh, through the olive tree campaign. So we plant about 8,000 to 10,000 trees a year. Um, we also have a rehabilitation program that focuses on uh, on working with the psychosocial needs of children, uh, survivors of conflict, uh, of uh, you know, political violence, and to, uh, to reintegrate these children, make sure they make up schooling, they make up work, and that they are able to provide positively to their society. And we also work to, on advocacy and rights of people with disabilities. So as a result of COVID, our sports centers, our community centers, along with our vocational training school in Jericho, so our four main centers throughout the West Bank, started running emergency provisions. Uh, it's, uh, we have been able to reach about 750 families uh, with over 4,000 direct beneficiaries. And the whole idea is to keep people home. Um, you don't need to go out to get groceries. You don't need to go get the hygiene. We'll, keep, uh, we'll help you keep your surroundings clean. We'll help you have food. Um, the aim is to also to deliver to elderly people so that they are most at risk so that they don't leave home and that they can make it through the quarantine time. Um, in addition to that, and this is something I have benefited from as part of my spirit, mind and body, is the sports centers have been running online uh, workout videos. So every trainer posts a video on a daily basis. Um, we've had, and they keep cycling through. We've been doing it for two months since mid-March already. And... Uh, it's been very good. We stay at home, but stay healthy as well. Um, our rehabilitation program has issued, uh, has developed a guide for coping with mental health in, uh, for the family and for children as well inside the home. So we need to take care of ourselves while we are in quarantine so that we are better able to care for our children. We need to understand their mental state and we need to understand our mental state as well so that we can survive through this time. And we've also opened the mental health hotline for public use during this pandemic. In our women development program, uh, we have, uh, it, they use a model of creating protection and resilience groups. These protection and resilience groups throughout COVID started acting as a quasi-government. Uh, they were the ones who were manning the entries to the villages to make sure that people who come in um, are being checked, that they have tests done for COVID so that they don't bring in disease with them into these remote areas that really don't have uh, any governmental oversight over them. Um, and where we're going now and uh, the anxiety that we feel, we call this the 2020 and beyond section. So for our programs, which we spoke about, not our centers, but our programs are mainly funded through church-related institutional donors, government agency. But we worry about the future of funding. Uh, our most, uh, our, our, 
biggest partners come from Western Europe, Northern America, etc. And these are the places that are the hardest hit by the virus. And as such, um, we are not sure. We are we feel fairly secure for 2020. Um, a lot of them have been understanding and have allowed us to uh, readjust our work plan to the current reality. We're just not sure what funds will be available for next year and how this will. Uh, it's how this will impact our ability to deliver services to our community. Our biggest risk is in the sports and community center, which runs a business subscription-based model. We've had zero revenue since March. Um, we have, uh, so in Israel, uh, in, inside Jerusalem, it, is, it, it applies under Israeli law. So we have uh, the ability to furlough staff at 70% of their salaries from the country. And we did that immediately. In the West Bank, we don't have that privilege. It's still a government that's being set up and it's still an economy that's under development. So they're unable to provide the safety net. So we have, okay, we paid March salaries and we paid April and May salaries at 50%. And we're waiting to see by the end of this month how we will be able to do this. Um, we don't know when we will open or how we will be able to open. Uh, there's going to be new distancing and indoor capacity limitations for our gyms. Uh, swimming pools are also a big mystery uh, um, and they are very costly to maintain as well. So if we're not able to function at full volume, we're not really sure what exact services we can engage in. However, we understand also that there's an impact on people's confidence to go out. And this is going to affect our membership as well. So we are trying to study, we're trying to figure out where to go from here. We're trying to see how we can, if we need the need to reduce staff, whether we need to reduce working hours, uh, whether we need to put people on some unpaid leave, we have to make this together. Um, the, the, we are very lucky that we operate as a family. Uh, we are not, uh, so we, so the Y was going to take a hit, our employees are going to take a hit, and the whole, the, the basic premise is that we minimize the damage caused to both parties. So what we've done is we positioned ourselves for summer 2020. We stopped planning very far ahead because we don't know what's going to happen. But what we've decided to do is that we are going to offer safe spaces for youth, uh, for families, for the economy to pick up, for, the, for uh, our society to overcome COVID. Uh, we need to have a confidence in leaving the home. So the YMCA will position itself in Beit Sahur, in Ramallah, and in Jerusalem as a place, as a safe space for children to come. And this way the parents can, be able, can leave their homes and go to work and not worry about their children being exposed to disease. We will take care of them. We are running small day camps with the idea of having it your social distancing, very small, it will be outdoors. We have great outdoor facilities. We thought to run open days, and this is our way of making people enjoy the summer without having the burden of being in a, in a carnival-like atmosphere, but with a social distancing being taken care of, everything is spaced apart. And But this way we can allow families to sort of feel, get a sense of normalcy once again. Uh, we thought of running sports competition with social distancing. So if you play basketball, we can have a three-point competition. We're not going to have three-on-three three because you can't really play defense with social distancing. But we can play a game of horse. We have to get creative and we need to have some fun. Um, we're going to continue to provide mental health relief and pro uh, promote uh, advocate for rights of people with disab physical disabilities and especially the troubling times. And this is in addition to the already difficult circumstances that they have to also endure this overall uh, pandemic. And finally, we will be advocating for women's equal rights as our way of combating gender-based violence as, uh, as you know, the lockdown and the situations at home has sort of given uh, uh, opened eyes on um, on some on issues related to gender violence. So in our vocational school, we're also piloting some online classes for vocations. Um, this is going to be very interesting and we'll see how we'll go with it and where we'll pick it up. But uh, necessity is the mother of all inventions. And I would like to take my last couple of slides and share with you what why, why I'm so proud to be part of this organization. Why is the YMCA different? How, how can such a man, this is what you reflect on when you're going through this. How can we go for 175 years and still remain significant and be a success still today? Um, 
and I really thought deep about it. And we are the same way we were founded. We are a group of volunteers. We are different local networks from all over the world that come together under one idea, one vision. And the idea is the, to provide a platform for youth way before Facebook did, way before Instagram did. The YMCA till today continues to provide a platform for youth to express their voice, to express their ideas somewhere where they can be free and safe. So, and finally, why do we do what we do so well is because I believe we have, we are very diverse. We don't leave anybody out. We are very connected with our society as community centers. And this allows us to not only see problems, but we actually share the problems that our society shares. And this makes us better able to understand and address them. And it's this diversity and this inclusion in the YMCA that's, the, that's a backbone for why we are successful and, and why we make a difference. And from the world why, I would like to take you to my East Jerusalem why. And I'd like to note what Mike said about not being, about being adaptable. And you have to be open during this time. And I would like to tell you as well, for you to, to be able to do that, you cannot take anything for granted. And this is somewhere where the Palestinian experience as well has taught us over time. We are a people for whom adversity is nothing new. For over a century, we've been slowly having our rights eroded, our li movements limited, our freedom. Um, we've had in 1948, 85% of our people became displaced. But we still survived. And we still continue to survive until today. And we still continue to serve and provide a good mission. And the essence for why we are able to do this are two things. One is the human spirit. And I don't know if it appears behind uh, my picture here, but the human spirit is strong. And I'm really happy to declare this. We have a surviving spirit that's creative. Our spirit took us to the moon. Our spirit has pushed boundaries. Our spirit refuses to give up. And our spirit wants to be free. And this is what we are fighting, this lockdown. This is what's been the most trapping. We feel trapped. And our spirit is trying to find a way to overcome all of this. And secondly, I want to talk about our humanity. And that this disease was able to show us that there are so much, we have so much more in common than we have apart. We share the same fears. We fear for the disease the same, irrespective of what our background is. We love our children the same. We are worried about them. We're worried about our parents. Um, we love the same things. We fear the same things. We laugh about the same things. And I think our human spirit and our humanity is a good way forward. And this will be how we will overcome this pandemic. The love always will overcome hate and justice will always prevail. We saw animals come to cities. We saw our impact on our, on our earth, on our environment. I think environment issues should not be held up any longer once COVID is over. I think social justice issues should take things for granted. We should create the change and we should create it today. Something as simple as having two people across each other from a balcony sing to each other lifted the human spirit. Seeing great performers perform for free just because they want to tell you they are there for you, not because they want to make a, 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 a living or to make a wage. They are just doing the art for the art. We have gone back to what makes us human. And this is something for me that's, that's really lifting my spirit. And finally, I will leave you with this message. Pray for health and please continue to pray for peace. And thank you. Is there equitable access to health care for Palestinians during this current public health crisis? And an addendum to that, how can we position the YMCA to thrive in a new normal? Okay, so the first question is much easier. <laughs> the, the, healthcare in, the, the healthcare system in Palestine, being a country that's under a military occupation, is almost adequate at best. Uh, we have about 200 plus 240, 250 when the pandemic started in terms of ventilators. So the, the health system did not have the capacity to cope with it. But the government did a wonderful job. Uh, they immediately locked down. 
as uh, soon as cases were declared in Bethlehem from tourists, there was immediate shutdown. And because they knew they couldn't cope with the pandemic, they did their best to prevent the spread of the pandemic. Um, and I believe they did a wonderful job. In Gaza, the situation is even more dire. There are, I believe, I want to misquote anything, but the, I mean, I think the in single digits is the amount of ventilators that are available for COVID, not available for operations and for ICUs. So, and, but you know, unfortunately, to say that, you know, sometimes the, the 13 year closure of Gaza sort of worked to their benefit, and we hope that that never is the case anyway. Um, in terms of the YMCA going forward, I think, and I will share this one point I have about the YMCA, our biggest strength and our biggest weakness is that we are local. Um, we are not, a, we are a global movement that's local everywhere it is. So I think we need to, um, we can see a benefit of centralizing certain goals and teams. Um, however, they all should stay within the local context because this has been our uh, this is it's never the YMC has never been imposed it's always been a part of the society um, I think the way forward for us is to uh, keep people's spirits up and to focus on youth this is our niche this is what we do best uh, we connect more young people than anybody else in the world and I think so long as we keep our focus on them and how we can contribute to our society and to the families uh, and to, to in general to the relief through youth we will be okay